to our third screencast from chapter one, what is science? Now in this screencast, we're gonna cover what is the scientific mindset. We're gonna also go over what's the difference between a hypothesis and a theory. And then we're gonna go over what are some of the branches of biology. Well, in this first part, the scientific mindset, uh, what type of attitude do you need to be a good scientist? Well, the first thing you need is curiosity. Curiosity is essential for any scientist because as they walk through the natural world, they're always looking at things and they're going, huh, wonder why that happened. Whoa, did you see that? Wonder what caused that? Every good scientist has that ability to be extremely curious. They also have to have a healthy, healthy dose of skepticism. Now, skepticism allows you to refuse any explanation unless there's evidence provided to back it up. Uh, basically what this means in plain English is the scientist has to be able to only look at data and evaluate what that data means. Because without data to back up what a scientist says or believes or wants to show you, then their explanation is just not credible. So you got to be very skeptical and basically, basically when you look at somebody else's data, you got to really be kind of a harsh critic of it. Is the data saying exactly what you want it to say? And then uh, last but not least, every scientist has to be incredibly creative. The creative scientist will be able to take their curiosity and extend that into very eloquent and very just beautifully designed experiments. All great scientists know how to take a very complicated test and break it down into something extremely simplistic. All right, what is a theory? Uh, the word theory is something that's kind of tossed around in, in, the, in the public, and it's usually misused in the public. Uh, in the world of science, a theory is an extremely powerful word. Okay, Now, as you see up here in the orange, this is the definition that I like to use. Uh, a theory is basically a hypothesis that has lots of supporting evidence. Uh, you could also say it's a collection of hypotheses that are kind of grouped together and that they also have a lot of supporting evidence. Now, a textbook definition is this one here in green. Uh, according to our book, which would be Miller Levine's Biology, and that would be the one with the parrot on it, a well-tested explanation that unifies a broad range of observations and hypotheses, or hypotheses that enables a scientist to make accurate predictions about new situations. So, when it comes time for a, a test, you want to make sure that you know what this one is, but if you want to keep it simple, all right, make sure you, you know this one right there. That may be the world's worst smiley face. Let's fix that. Let's get rid of that. Okay. How about we just make a little star? Oops, wrong button. There we go. How about next? That'll work. All right. Okay. Now, a theory is extremely important to scientists because they use those to make predictions, okay? For example, like with global climate change that's occurring in our world, there are lots and lots of theories on how, why, and when that's going to occur. And scientists are using these theories to predict what's going to happen in the future, okay? And hopefully that all of these hypotheses, they've got a ton of data to back them up so that they become a theory and they're going to be able to give us an accurate prediction. And when it comes to global warming, uh, some of those predictions are just not that, that pretty. So down here in this salmon color or pink, a theory can be changed or discarded with the discovery of new evidence. Now I find this one of the most beautiful things about science is science is understanding enough that when new evidence comes along, they will change what they've thought before. That's very, very difficult for human beings. Um, typically when humans, when they have a precedence, they have a tendency to follow those for the rest of their lives. But in science, if there's new evidence that comes along, a new precedent will be started and they'll follow that until new evidence comes along, okay? Now, when we're talking about human beings, um, one of the most difficult things we need to deal with, whoa, we hit the wrong button here. There we go. All right, when we're dealing with human beings, we gotta look out for bias, okay? And bias is essentially personal opinion. Uh, every human being has built-in biases. 
you know how you were raised a certain way, you have a certain set of, of thought processes, you have your own certain types of political views. A scientist, by design and, and by profession, needs to avoid the use of bias every time because we don't want their personal feelings to basically tell us what the data is. We want to let the data speak for itself. We are not speaking for the data. And from any experiment, when you speak for the data, you are showing your bias. Let the data prove what the data proves. Okay. All right, let's brush this stuff away. There we go. Got rid of that. All right. On to the next. All right. What is biology? Well, it basically, it's, it comes from two Greek words. The first one being bio, which means life, and then obviously logi, which means a study of. So you put two together, it's the study of life. Now, I guarantee you on a test or a quiz, this question will show up and that's the answer. So don't miss this one. It's extremely, it's too easy of a question for you not to get right. All right, branches of biology. Uh, one of my favorites is zoology, even though it says zoo, it's pronounced zo. So it's zoology, study of animals. What do we put in a zoo? Animals. Okay. Uh, one that's also one of my favorites is botany, the study of plants. Uh, I enjoy the study of plants because they're so different from animals. Unfortunately, uh, if you live in an Indiana like uh, I do and my students do, um, in your biology one class, you get to learn very, very little about botany due to our state standards. All right, probably my number one favorite part of biology is biochemistry. And if you look at here, you got bio and chemistry. So this is the study of the chemistry that makes life happen. Everything that occurs within a living thing is caused by a chemical reaction inside that cell or inside many cells, right? So I cannot stress to you enough how important the chemistry of life is. And in my course, and hopefully in your course, they'll be using these, or you'll be studying the chemistry of life, biochemistry, a ton. And then one that everybody's probably familiar with is paleontologists, and this would be the study of ancient life. Typically, you're looking for fossils of dinosaurs or, or other things, all right? Okay, well, that'll wrap up this screencast, very short and sweet. Uh, there are some important topics in here, though. Make sure you know the difference between a hypothesis and a theory. Remember, a hypothesis is a possible answer that can be tested. A theory is a hypothesis or a number of hypotheses that have tons of supporting evidence, and then that will be used to make future predictions. And then obviously on this screen, uh, some basic stuff. Make sure you know this one so that you can really get some, some easy questions right on any kind of quizzes. All right, until uh, next episode, uh, keep studying hard and good luck in your classes.